Hello, once again, this is Brother Teacher. Does boiling water get rid of the toxins uh, that are contained therein? First of all, understanding that the water that we're boiling comes from the city, through our sewer system, and out of the faucet in our sinks, in our kitchens and in our bathrooms and our showers. That's the water that we're talking about boiling. So I've heard people say, experts and novices, boil your water and then it's good to drink. That's partly true. But here's the real truth. When you boil your water, you kill bacteria and you kill pathogens. Pathogens, those things that are live organisms, you know, from insects and germs and bacteria and viruses and so forth. Those are what you're killing. But the heavy metals are still there. Your chlorine, your mercury, and your lead are still there. So you're still ingesting those chemicals and or lead metals. You know what I'm saying. You can't heat those and get rid of them. They're still in the water. So what are you to do? First of all, understand this. First, understand that there are literally thousands of chemicals in the water that we drink that comes out of our municipality. Thousands, not a dozen or two, thousands. Too numerous to name. But there are key ones that you hear people talk about all of the time. Uh, arsenic, that's in your drinking water. Lead, one of the most deadliest poisons is in your drinking water. Mercury, another one of the top deadliest metals is in your drinking water. And then we have chlorine, basically bleach. It's in your drinking water. Then we have fluoride. That's in your drinking water. And then the list goes on. You also have pesticides and herbicides and insecticides in your drinking water. I think that's enough to know, don't you? So some of this stuff is dumped into the water supply deliberately to help kill some of the other things. And some of this stuff comes from the air and it lands in the water. Some of this stuff comes from runoff from farmlands and it gets into our water supply. Runoff meaning what, teacher? Runoff meaning this. You spray your crops with pesticides, with DDT, with Roundup, and various other insecticides and with herbicides and it's in the soil. When it rains, especially when it rains a lot, that water begins to seep out and then it goes into your water supply, it goes into your sewers, into your rivers and your lakes and so forth and it ends up coming out of your faucet, okay? After it's so-called been going through the reservoir Many of those dangerous chemicals and metals, heavy metals, are in the water supply still. So our water supply is really not fit for us to drink. Is it better than going out and drinking water out of your river? Probably so. But it is still deadly. It is still toxic. One more time. The water that comes out of your municipal supply, out of your sink, is poisonous to us. Now, just because you may not get sick 
the first day or the first month or the first year of drinking water out of the faucet. Over time, ladies and gentlemen, these toxins build up inside your body until your body can no longer combat them. And many of them linger inside the body's bones and tissues. And oftentimes, stress will cause them to manifest as cancer or some other disease. That's the way it goes. So I encourage everyone that's listening to me under the sound of my voice, get a good water filter for your sink in your kitchen, for the sink that's in your bathroom, and for your shower head that's in your bathroom as well. And most of these filters contain activated charcoal. And that will help rid your water of much of the heavy metals and some of the other toxins that are in the water supply. Let me tell you this before I leave. Did you not know, and I've said this in time past, things enter the body four ways. Number one, inhalation, breathing in. That's how things from the outside enter the body. Absorption through the skin. That's number two. Number three, ingestion through the mouth, eating, chewing, swallowing. That's the third one. And the fourth one is through the skin by an injection such as a needle, a cut, or an abrasion, a scratch. It enters that way through the integumentary system. Those four ways. So I said that to say this. Let's go back to the shower situation. For those of you who don't have a filter on your shower and you like taking those real hot showers, and you have those sliding doors or those curtains and it gets real, real foggy inside of your bathroom, guess what? That hot water and that steam that it's producing has vapors that's got chlorine in it, fluoride in it, and all of the other chemicals become airborne and you are inhaling them as well as absorbing them through your skin. So it's the same as drinking the water. You follow? So you need to get a good detox program. And if you need any help on the detoxing, please let me know. Place it in the comment section below and tell me what your issue is. And if I can help you, I most definitely will. But what you should not do, never go to a grocery store, to a pharmacy, and buy those expensive bottles of detox liquids or the programs that they have for detoxing when you can do it for nearly nothing. You're spending 20 or $30 on some stuff that's going to do more harm to you than good. You can detox for less than $5. Real simple. Watch some of my earlier videos if you don't believe this. And if you don't watch the earlier videos, ask me in the comment section below and I'll let you know what you can do to detox. And it's that simple. Okay, this is Brother Teacher. Yahweh love you. You know I was going to say it. And I love you. Stay blessed. I'll see you in the next video. So long.